Master, please have some coffee and go. After some time, they gave me coffee. Then he said, uh, kindly pray for my daughter. He said, she cannot come, you have to come. Then I began to suspect something. Some unexpected situation is there waiting for me. I walked into his uh, uh, inner room of his home. I saw a girl on the bed. And that was a horrifying scene to look at that girl. Eyes bulging out like that. She was just skin and bone. And she smiled at me and it was like looking at a, a very a horror, horrifying scene that was. And her both hands were like bent like that. With the difficulty she said, she saluted like that. What happened to her? I inquired. That pastor told me. She is 25 years old. Since the day she is born, she is uh, lying down prone in that position. She never walked. She never sat up. She never uttered a word. She is physically challenged in every way. She can't speak. She can't listen, she can't express. 25 years old, just skeleton and skin on that. She's alive. And every night, midnight, she will cry bitterly. Terribly, she'll be crying out aloud. Where she's having pain, what kind of a pain, in which part of the body, no one can say. She keeps on crying throughout the night. And that pastor was telling me, Sir, my wife and myself, we never slept, slept a whole night for 25 years. Ever since this girl is born in our family. Many times we thought, why has God given us this daughter? Why doesn't he take her away? It would be much better if she were never born in our family. But we cannot kill her, we cannot do away with her, she is our daughter. Twenty-five years, she is a wound in our hearts. I had the shock of my lifetime because he was a very good pastor. Many high caste Hindus were saved through him. He was a very good evangelist and he, was, he belonged to Hebron Fellowship. And in the rain itself, I came out, I began to drive my scooter, going back home. And I was just wrestling with the Lord, complaining, I was just, uh, I was just uh, almost in my spirit, I was shouting at the Lord, Lord, you have done great injustice to this man. I am not convinced about what you have done. Why have you given such a child to such a good, holy, godly man? That man is not willing even to watch the TV. Doesn't even try to read a newspaper because he all the time reads the Holy Bible. He's on the time, all the time he's on his knees praying, preaching the gospel. Why have you given him this suffering? I heard the voice of the Lord. Stop, my son. And take your scooter where you can park your scooter. I want to speak to you. I obeyed the Lord. The Lord was speaking to me. My son, you are very angry with me. Are you not? You are hurt. You are wounded in your heart. Aren't you? I said, yes, Lord. What else do you expect me to do? I'm really hurt about what you have done to this family. Then the Lord began to speak to me. I kept the girl to be alive. I kept her alive because I wanted to show that girl to you. I have a message for you to take to the whole world. I have a message you must deliver to every member of my family, 
all my sons and daughters i have a message for you because that girl since the day she was born is lying in the same position never even attempted to sit or to walk or to utter a word and she is just skin and bone in the in the cot in the bed she is not growing she is not dead but neither she is very much alive for anybody she is a wound a problem in the family on the day she was born they were very happy celebrating a child is born to us in our family on the 21st day they even had a wonderful thanksgiving prayer meeting but then they realized the problem she is abnormal child she did not grow the lord said you are hurt about that girl my son i have hundreds of thousands of children in the similar condition in my family so many christians are born into my family my children they are they are christians they are born again they believed the gospel they were baptized in the waters but then they never showed any growth no growth at all absolutely they were saved 10 years ago 25 years back or even 40 years back 50 years back they are saved for the name sake they are christians but no sign of growth na kutumbamlo lakshala mandi atla unnaru kotla mandi unnaru rakshana pondera atlage unnaru em edugudala ledu ఈ పాపను చూసి నువ్వు నీ హృదయం గాయపడింది కదా నా బాధ నీకు అర్థం కావాలని ఇలా చేశాను అన్నాడు ఫ్రమ్ దట్ డే ఆన్వర్డ్స్ టు విచ్ ఎవర్ కంట్రీ ఐ గో విచ్ ఎవర్ చర్చ్ ఐ విజిట్ ఐ టెల్ దమ్ దిస్ స్టోరీ వితౌట్ ఫెయిల్ బికాస్ గాడ్ కమాండెడ్ మీ ఇట్ ఈస్ గుడ్ థింగ్ యు ఆర్ బోర్న్ ఇన్ టు గాడ్స్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఆర్ యూ బికమ్ అ వూండ్ ఇన్ గాడ్స్ హార్ట్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ గ్రో we have to grow spiritually for that we have to endeavor to dig deep into the holy bible the deep strengthening meal that is the first thing we have to do to be strong go deeper into the holy bible read the bible secondly you must be we must be anointed by the holy spirit if we really want to be strong you know that very popular verse in acts 18 apostol karyalu 1 8 lo aa prakhyati ganchina vachana manandarki telusu parishuddhaatma mee midiki vachunappudu meeru shakti ponduduru ganaka meeru sakshalai untaru you shall receive power when the holy spirit is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses no one who doesn't read the bible can be strong in the lord secondly no one who is not anointed can be strong in the lord you cannot be powerful we cannot be witnessing christian without the anointing we need the anointing whether you speak in tongues or not is a different matter if the lord doesn't give you the gift of tongues don't bother about that there are many anointed people who don't speak in tongues and there are many weak christians who speak in tongues i come from a pentecostal background as i told you in my testimony i was speaking in tongues when i was 10 years old that doesn't mean that i am a superman a super believer among the christians the gift of tongues is just one among the nine gifts that doesn't make anyone a special believer you can speak in tongues and still be weak in your spiritual life what we need is the fresh anointing on our head every morning go deep into the scriptures and be strong in the lord or receive the anointing and be strong in the lord and the most important of all very amazing fact is you can be filled with the holy spirit anointed with the holy spirit 
know all the scriptures, yet be a weak Christian. That is not a slip of the tongue. I spoke very calculatively. I mean every letter which I uttered. You can know the whole Bible. You can have the Holy Spirit anointing upon you and still be weak in certain aspects. You can still have weak moments in your life. Now tell me, was King David anointed or not? Did he know the scriptures or not? King David knew the scriptures well, so well. He was meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. 24 hours he was meditating on the holy scriptures. Of course, he only had the first five books of the Bible at his time. But he knew the word of God. He loved the word of God. He was anointed. Yet, he had a weak moment in his life. Just because you know the Bible, you have the Holy Spirit anointing, don't think that that will make you foolproof, fallproof. You may still fall, fall into sin. To really be strong, I am sharing with you the final secret, the final point of this message. To be really strong in the Lord, you must trust in the grace of Jesus Christ. That is what Paul is teaching in 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter. If someone can kindly read it out for me. Are you displaying in English Bible? Thank you, brother. Thank you, Bible. 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, the opening verse. Now you have that on the screen displayed. You therefore, my son, be strong in, the, in grace. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. No one can be strong without trusting and living in the grace of God. Again, kindly display for us, brother, 1 John 4th chapter, 16th verse. There, once again, Paul tells us that we have to trust in God's love. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. We have known and believed the love that God has upon us. God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. We must know the love of Jesus and trust, believe in the love of Jesus. Now I think I am almost done with my message. Let me tell you my dear friends, my brothers and sisters. It is true that we are unworthy in the presence of the Lord. But let that not create an inferiority complex in your heart. Let that not rob you of your joy of salvation. We are full of weaknesses and shortcomings. But never, never lose your joy. Never lose your confidence because you are unworthy. I am unworthy. Every Christian, every human being is unworthy. Before the absolute holiness of God the creator, even the cherubs and seraphim of heaven are unworthy. Nobody is worthy before God. Let me tell you, in Isaiah's vision, in the sixth chapter of the uh, prophetic book of Isaiah. He saw the Lord Jehovah seated upon the highly exalted throne. And you know the seraphim, the great archangel seraphim were singing day and night. The Lord God of hosts is holy, holy, holy. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let me ask you a question. While shouting to one another, 
the lord god of hosts is holy 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 the seraphim were covering their faces why should they cover their faces that means they didn't have guts or confidence to look straight into the face of god if seraphim cannot look straight into the face of god how can i how can we the children of adam and eve we are born in sin the law of sin and death rules in our body james tells us all of us stumble in many ways before the lord manamandaramunu aneka vishayallo tottiluchunnam yakobu 3rd adhyayam lo chapter 2nd vachanam the book of epistle of james third chapter first two verses he says we are all stumbling before the lord my dear brothers and sisters we definitely are not perfect within ourselves by our own effort we are perfect only in jesus while it is a truth a fact that we are not up to the mark we are falling short of god's expectation at the same time let us always remember god loves us as we are with all your weaknesses god loves you god loves you if you don't trust that fact you become a weak christian you may not know the whole bible you may not be perfect your prayer life may not be up to god's expectation we don't pray as much as uh, prophet samuel prayed we don't pray like david we don't pray like elijah we don't pray like paul we are not so righteous so perfect we have uh, we are surrounded with all kinds of temptations the society around us is corrupt they are always encouraging adulterous thoughts in our minds my son was asking when he was 6 years old daddy do only girls use the soap for having a shower why not boys also use a soap he was asking me because on the tv advertisement they were always showing a girl using a soap this is an adulterous generation the films tv shows everything is full of adultery they teach adultery they encourage adultery our god is a holy god but we are living amidst a generation which is full of adultery and fornication people are no more shy to talk about that sin publicly and now the very sin for which god punished sodom and gomorrah is being legalized and now it is a crime to condemn it publicly we are living in such a generation god knows and what kind of a stress we are living the stress of temptation how much strain we are suffering my dear brothers god knows us more than we we know ourselves god knows all our weaknesses and still god loves you god loves you god is gracious towards you let me tell you one thing a real life story or a or an incident i think all of you have heard the name of that great man of god dr oswald j smith how many of you have heard the name oswald j smith the great man of canada toronto the founder of people's church the biggest missionary church of all time they have raised the highest amounts of uh, money to give to missions uh, after him his son paul b smith uh, led the church i don't know what's happening presently when dr oswald smith was teaching a bible study a young new convert stood up said sir i have a doubt he was baptized just the day before one day earlier a new christian new convert new 
member of the church. He said, Sir, I am newly baptized. I am happy that I am saved in Jesus Christ. I know that all my past sins are forgiven, washed away by the blood of Jesus. But I would like to know what happens to my future sins. That was his tension. I know Jesus has taken care of all my past sins. But what about my future sins? What will happen to me? Then Dr. Smith said, Oh, my son, that is a difficult question. A very important question. Very intelligent question. Let us think about that. Come on, come on, let us think about that. That great man of God was helping him to think in the right direction. He said, My son, you are happy to acknowledge that your past sins have been taken care of by Jesus. Because Jesus died for your sins on the cross. All your past sins are taken care of. My son, I, I have a doubt. I should like to know how many of your sins were future when Jesus died for you? How many of your sins were future when Jesus died for you? He said, all my sins were future because I was not yet born. All my sins were future only to Jesus because I was not even born. Then Dr. Smith said, then for Jesus, my son, it should not make any difference. For you, some of your sins are past, some of your sins are future. But for Jesus, all your sins are future. So, as a child of God, you try to live a holy life. You don't choose to fall in sin. Don't try to fall in sin. You strive and endeavor your level best. You struggle your level best to live a holy life. But in case if some temptation would occur, if in case you fall in temptation, then the blood of Jesus is sufficient for you. If you confess your sin, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. And the blood of Jesus cleansing you will create a hatred for sin in your heart. He doesn't just forgive your sins, but give you a new heart that will hate sin. So don't worry. Your prayer life is not up to the mark. Your knowledge of the word is not up to the mark. Your spiritual maturity is not up to God's expectation. It doesn't mean that you don't try to become perfect. While trying our level best to become perfect in Jesus. Spiritually mature. We must remember at every step, God is loving us. God is loving us. So, once again, back to 1 John 4.16, brother. We have known God's love. How much God loves us? How much God loves us? We have known and believed the love that God has to us. We not only believe in the blood of Jesus, we also believe in the love of Jesus. That love can never be quenched. He loves you whatever may be your life's condition. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. The book of Jeremiah, 31st chapter, 3rd verse. The book of Jeremiah, 31, 3, please. I have loved thee with an everlasting Love, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. The love of Jesus can never be quenched. So if you trust in that love, you will be a strong person. Because, this is the closing statement of my message this evening. Because the devil wants you to become weak by doubting the love of God. There are many Christians these days, they have no joy of salvation because they observe their own spiritual life. 
which is not really good enough. So they raise a doubt, they cherish, they, they allow a doubting mind in their, in, in their thinking. Maybe God hates me. Maybe God doesn't like me. Anything bad happens to them, they simply say, maybe God is punishing me. God will not punish you. He took the punishment upon himself. Many Christians have no joy of salvation because they are spiritual perfectionists. They are perfectionists. So they know they are not happy with their spiritual life. They are convinced even God is not happy. So God is not happy. They don't even have assurance that they will go to heaven. Let me tell you, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. Underline those marks in your Bible. Should not perish. It is God's will that you should not perish because you trust in God's only begotten son. You may not be a perfect Christian. Neither am I. Neither was David Brainerd. Neither was Charles Spurgeon. You ask any saint on the face of earth, beginning from Dr. Billy Graham. Question him point blank. Dr. Billy Graham, do you think you are perfect? He says, no, no, my brother. I am what I am because of his grace. Ask any pastor, any spiritual leader whom you regard as a great leader. No Christian, no spiritual leader on the face of earth will say, I am good enough. Nobody can say that. We are all passing in the examination because of grace of God. My dear brothers and sisters, you must know the word of God well, fill your heart with the word of God, and be anointed and trust in the grace of Jesus. At the closing, not from the Bible, I will tell you an incident from the life of the great Dr. Martin Luther, the first reformer. Once he was uh, sitting in his office room, this is on record in many books, many preachers have said this, including Charles Spurgeon. So this is a known, well-known story, a real experience of Dr. Martin. I said, I am Lucifer. I am the devil. I have something to tell you. Lucifer, why have you come here? What do you have to do with me? Lucifer said, be patient. I will take only two minutes of yours. I have something to show you. Look at this paper. He handed over a, 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 a long sheet of paper to Dr. Martin Luther. He observed, he noticed that that was a list of the sins or mistakes of Martin Luther. After being a good Christian, a preacher, a reformer, so many weak moments, small, small things, there may be a small unclean thought, an unclean way of looking at a person, all those things this fellow recorded, Lucifer and handed over to Martin Luther. The sin he committed, the date, the time, and the place, everything was on record. Martin Luther said, this is right, all these are my sins. So Lucifer, are these all you have? Or you have some more, some more uh, list also? The record of some more sins also? He said, uh, no, no, many more sins are there, but I brought only a few. He said, bring that list also. Three times Lucifer went and brought a longer list of his sins. The third time he said, no more. This is all the record of your sins. 
is it not sufficient how do you think god will use you how do you think you can change the world and reform the church wait wait he says he has a pen and the bottle of ink on his table the red ink bottle he dipped the pen into the ink and then he said he is he struck off the total list with the red ink and wrote cancelled in the blood of jesus cancelled in the blood of jesus and he threw the paper in the door lucifer vanished he never came back to lucifer uh, he never came back to this great man of god this is the real life story of uh, lucifer uh, i'm sorry real life story of this great man we call as the first reformer luther martin luther lucifer came to this man of god he came to me also he comes to you also he comes to you also but whenever he comes to you don't tell him that i am anointed man you have to go from here jesus was anointed immediately after being anointed he came to tempt jesus david was anointed knew the scriptures so well and devil came to him and tempted him when the devil comes to you don't tell him that you are anointed you are a bible scholar you are speaking in tongues you are a worshipper you know the bible he laughs at you if you know the bible he knows the bible better than you the devil quoted the scriptures to jesus so he is not uh, he is not impressed about your bible knowledge if you are anointed also he is not afraid but if you say in spite of all this my lord loves you in spite of me my lord loves you i am used by the lord many times god uses us not because of us but in spite of us in spite of us in spite of us god's work god's movement of the holy spirit is not because of our worth our virtue our holiness not because of our qualification not because of our maturity not because of our perfection god's work is carried out by the grace of god no one goes to heaven because of his maturity anyone goes to heaven only because of the grace of god of course we must try to grow and be perfect and mature but don't depend on your effort to go to heaven i may i may be good or bad perfect or imperfect i may be strong or weak in all my situations jesus loves me with an everlasting love i am telling you if you are well versed with the holy scriptures you are a strong christian if you know the bible well you are a strong christian if you are anointed with the holy spirit you are a strong christian but on the top of all of this if you keep on trusting god's love you will be invincible in the in the battlefield the devil will never be able to defeat you the devil can defeat the bible scholar the devil can defeat an anointed man but the devil will never be able to defeat you if you trust in the love of god always love the lord with all your heart and believe that he is loving you the flame of god's love will drive away all the temptations from your love no from your life so my dear brothers and sisters shall we just say thanks to the lord i want to thank him thank you lord for loving me in spite of what i am thank you lord for loving me with everlasting love and you have drawn me with your loving kindness i want to thank him will you please join me let us all together pray and say thank you jesus for loving me thank you jesus for your grace your mercy 
your infinite love and mercy is upon me you love me so much you love me so much you gave yourself on the cross that i should not perish if i do not know how to pray lord you will teach me to pray if i do not know how to live a holy life you will live the holy life in me lord you will teach me how to run away from temptation like joseph of old testament lord you know me fully more than what i know about myself lord you know all my weaknesses all my desires all my failures you know all my secret faults prabhu ana rahasya jeevitam niku telusu na abhilasha na aasha niku telusu na vaifalyamu na otame niku telusu telisi kuda nannu premisthunna trust the love of god try this try this my dear sister try this my brother every morning kneel down go to the presence of the lord on your knees and lift up your hands and worship him praise him for his love never failing love thank you jesus for loving me begin your day praising him for his love and you will walk in victory continual victory you cannot be strong if you don't read the bible you cannot be strong if you don't pray for the anointing of the holy spirit but in spite of having these two blessings you cannot be strong if you don't trust the grace of jesus the love of god that grace of god they follow you all the days of your life he loves you even when you cannot love yourself shall we just lift up our hands and say jesus thank you for loving me thank you thank you lord you are not casting me away in john 6th chapter 37th verse he says him that cometh unto me i will in no wise cast away నా యుద్ధకు వచ్చి వారిని నేను ఎంత మాత్రము బయటికి త్రోసివేనన్నాడు నన్ను త్రోసివేయలేదు గనక నీకు స్తోత్రం ఇప్పుడు చెప్దాం ఇప్పుడు చెప్దాం లెట్ ఎస్ సెయిట్ నావ్ అండ్ టుమారో మార్నింగ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ అవర్ ఎవ్రీ ఈవినింగ్ ఎవ్రీ బెడ్ టైమ్ ఎవ్రీ టైమ్ యూ గో టు బెడ్ సే థ్యాంక్ యూ లోడ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ లోడ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ లోడ్ ఫార్ యూ we are so unworthy in your presence we acknowledge our unworthiness o lord even the seraphim the great archangels of heaven had no confidence to look straight into your face how much more unworthy we are o lord still we thank you that you love us your loving kindness towards us never never ceases you are an unchanging god never failing god never changing god your love for us can never be changed never be quenched oh lord thank you lord thank you lord you have taught us the secret of becoming a strong christian help us to be strong by our knowledge of the holy bible help us to oh lord each one of us help each one of us to be strong by filling our hearts with your word 
Help each one of us. Help me, your humble servant. Help each one of us, O Lord, to be anointed every morning. And help me and help each one of us to be strong, trusting in your love. Teach us the secret of the secret of being a, a strong Christian like Martin Luther. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You love us so much that you taught us the real secret towards a prospering spiritual life. In the, in the, in the time that is ahead of us, O Lord, we have many programs. The programs to glorify you for recreation, to encourage the young people, young Christians, encourage the church. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is seated right now in your presence. Bless each one of us and take us back into our respective places as burning lamps, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. Chalavandanalu, Krutagnatalu, Mikandariki, E. Manchavakashanaki, Chanaku Vandanalu, Pastigari Vandanalu, Kaduna twenty elders, Kivandanalu, Andariki Vandana. I thank each one of you for being patient with me. I think uh, the elders are coming over to the dais, to the pulpit.